when a paid DM shows up to run a game for a group of kids, he slowly becomes more and more creeped out by the behaviors of a kid that I can only describe as deeply disturbed. I was afraid to go into this story alone, I'll admit that. Luckily, we have a friend in today's sponsor, World Anvil. Breaking news, the legendary world building tool known as World Anvil has just made their site even better. Anybody who has played D&D over the last couple of years has surely heard of D&D Beyond. Well, now you can easily import your D&D Beyond characters into your world. It is awesome. Check this out, Crabos. I personally use World Anvil for my home game, so as soon as I heard, I just zipped my player's characters into my world in less than two minutes, leaving a surplus of time for crab raving. World Anvil is already the best tool out there for world builders right now, and the constant updates keep making it better. While the World Anvil team is adding newer and better features for existing members all the time, there has never been a better time to get started. But what's better than the best? The best for cheap. Click the link below for almost half off of any annual membership. I'll see you there. Bit of context. I'm a professional DM. It's been my job for the past 10 or so years, four of which under my own business. I mostly run games for children in after-school programs and different gifted classes. Some groups are my own, but most belong to other companies, as I became the go-to guy for when some other DM runs a group into the ground and leaves, and they need someone to pick up the pieces and revitalize the group. This story has to do with one such occasion. I get a call from the owner of a local gaming company who needs me to patch up an online group of 8-year-olds. The group started out with 10 players, standard size for this business, but has since dwindled down to 3, at which point the DM left. Same old story. I got this. First session rolls in and the three kids are, names obviously changed, Jimmy, a tabaxi druid, Alex, another tabaxi druid, and Damien, a half-orc cleric name selected for obvious reasons. Two turns into the first encounter and I discover that they have no concept of what a turn is comprised of, what AC is, and that you can even get hit in this game. This is something I often come across when patching up a group that's falling apart. The former DM just said yes to anything and everything, loaded the kids up with epic powers at level 1, and then let them power trip. Often kids get bored of a game with no stakes and the group dissolves. If this is the issue, I thought, I'm gonna get this back on track in two sessions. Oh boy, how wrong I was. Second session comes along and I used a trapped treasure chest to teleport the PCs into a new realm. Realm hopping was part of their previous DM shtick, so they ate it up. This new realm had some new rules to it, like spell slots and HP and other basic game mechanics. The kids actually seemed excited for some solid rules. The sessions went swimmingly until combat started. The players were to get a staff from a hag, but when they arrived at her hut she was nowhere to be found and the place was surrounded by harpies that were also after the same staff. The druids started taking down the flying nags while Damien ran off to the side attempting to use all of his spell slots to heal himself despite not having taken any damage yet. I thought that might be because this was the first actual threat to his character and he didn't want to lose it. The other kids managed to clear up the encounter, though they were quite injured, and all three decided to head to a nearby town to supply. This is where the mask starts slipping. The small town is having a festival. The kids hear of carnival games with possible gold winnings. They are fully into it. Five guards meet them at the gate and ask, Did you come to attend the festival? Damien lights up and replies, I came here to kill your mother! Um, what? The guard asks. The guard puts his hand on the hilt of his sword. What did you just say? I came here to kill your mother. Now move before I murder you all. At this point, I'm trying to go easy on the kids as I'm pretty sure that they aren't fully aware that consequences exist in or out of game. So instead of rolling initiative, I tell them that the guards bar their way and tell them that they are not welcome in the town. Damien flips. You racist pieces of shit, he screams into his mic as he casts spiritual weapon and summons a storm golem, an ability left from the previous DM. 
He then proceeds to try and murder the guards. Now, Damien's character might be stronger than a guard, but not five guards utilizing advantage. He quickly becomes aware that he is at a disadvantage, and for the first time, I witness him commanding the other players. Take this hit for me, he tells Alex, who gleefully obliges him. I stop combat for a second and tell Alex that he doesn't have to. I also explain that he can't just move out of a turn and jump in front of the blade. Damien is pissed. So next turn, you come here and take it. Alex agrees. After a couple of rounds, I think that the kids got the point, so I introduce a way out. The captain of the guard shows up to see what the commotion is and tells the players that since no permanent damage was done, they can surrender and spend the night in jail for the brawl. Damien pipes up. But I'm here to kill your mother! Captain of the guard picks up his heavy crossbow and shoots the half-orc. Damien flips his shit, starts actually screaming and wailing. Why is everybody targeting me? This is unfair! More combat, more screaming. It only comes to an end when Damien is dropped to zero hit points, and his stubborn, orcish nature lets him stay conscious at one. At this point, he surrenders and then lies on the ground per the guard's instructions. The other kids follow suit. One of the guards places handcuffs on Damien, and the kid flips out again. He can't touch me, he screams into his microphone. And then, with an eerie calm, commands another player, Jimmy, kill him. And Jimmy does. He turns into a bear and claws out the guard's throat with a nat 20. Now, this is murder. The guards slash into the kids, bringing everyone to zero hit points. The first thing I noticed was that these kids have no idea what actual consequences or combat looks like. The last DM was probably so worn down by these kids that they just let them get away with anything they wanted and easily win. Given that there isn't any mention of the GM telling the kids that things are changing, to them, the difference must be night and day. Don't get me wrong, Damien sounds like kind of a brat right now, but to be fair, the kids went from playing Minecraft on creative mode to Elden Ring. But if you think Damien is a little creepy here, he gets way creepier very quickly. Roll post. The kids are both angry and confused. Damien is screaming that he's quitting the class. But I'm still not giving up on these kids yet. Before the session ends, I tell them that they all wake up in jail and that the magistrate is coming in the morning. They have the night to plan their escape. Damien, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! Over and over again. I keep explaining that he's not and that they can still get out. Two of them are druids after all. It takes them a couple of minutes to realize that they can turn into mice and just walk out. Not wanting to leave their friend behind, Alex and Jimmy turn into rats, and after slipping through the bars, attempt to get the key off of the sleeping guard's belt. Damien is having none of it. I kick the cell door! I ask him if he's sure, because that will make noise. No one is helping me and I'm gonna die! I kick the door! Door kicked, guard wakes up, rats fail. Damien, I will kill your mother! Honestly, what is it with this kid and wanting to kill the guard's mother? Guard clangs his blade against the bars and tells Damien to stay quiet. He turns to go back to sleep as the kid pulls this fucked up shit. Alex, turn back into a tabaxi in front of the guard. What? Alex sounds upset and does not want to do this. I tell him that he does not have to. Damien becomes very calm in a creepy, threatening manner. Sacrifice yourself for me now, or I will kill you. I heard enough at this point. I'm about to call it and figure out a way for them to get out for next session. But before I get a chance to speak, Alex speaks up as resolute as I've ever heard an 8-year-old be. I turn back and throw myself on his blade. The druid dies then and there, and Damien seems satisfied. Alex less so. But we roll him a wizard for next session, which I am now actually dreading. I start to realize that the group losing kids has less to do with a loose DM and more to do with the psychopath half-work cleric. I'm still running the group and things are getting darker and even more troubling. Might update once some more of the story develops. TLDR, replacing an old DM with a dwindling group of kids, thinking it was the DM's fault, 
only to discover a creepy child that starts fights at every turn, then demands other kids literally sacrifice their characters for him. I have been following this story for a while now, waiting for part 2 to drop before making this video. And at last, here it is. The creepy conclusion to this tale. Roll post. Now to the new adventures of the terrifying Damien, still playing his half-orc cleric. His character was to be put to death by hanging that very morning, for the senseless murder of the guard. I gave both him and the other players a chance to mount a rescue. Jimmy, the surviving druid, escaped into the woods and was waiting for the right moment to act, while Alex joined him with his freshly rolled wizard. When the guards were sent to find rope, as they conveniently forgot to bring rope to the hanging, the players struck and freed the seething Damien, still enraged by the fact that his character had to suffer the indignity of being arrested. A chase ensued through the woods, and the kids were rolling pretty well to stay ahead of their pursuers. They then hid with obnoxiously high rolls as the guards were about to give up the chase. But that wasn't good enough for Damien. Ugh, we're gonna die, he muttered angrily. And then again, with that calm demeanor that he used in the jail the session before, he turned to Alex. Get out there, let them see you. Then, run away from us so I can get away. I was shocked, yes. I've experienced him doing this once before, but then he was desperate. This was clearly a situation where the danger was past. Alex, who just started to like his new wizard, was reluctant. Sacrifice yourself for me. It's either you die or I will kill you. I put my foot down and told all three that this is not allowed at my game and that no one can demand others sacrifice themselves and no one is allowed to issue threats against other players' characters. At least, I hope he was referring to the characters. Damien's reaction took me by surprise. He slumped down on his desk, completely defeated, and exclaimed through his elbows that he's dying. There was no danger at this point. Trying to ignore that, I moved on with the story, skipping some filler to get the plot moving again. Somebody called the Exorcist because this kid is genuinely starting to terrify me. Next he's gonna be climbing on walls screaming the lyrics of Stairway to Heaven backwards. Then he's gonna somehow pronounce the smiling devil emoji. I've hung out with 8 year olds before, and few of them would look up from their iPad let alone tell other kids to brutally sacrifice themselves for their own satisfaction. All jokes aside. I'm no psychologist, but I am morbidly curious as to what could possibly be going on in this kid's head or environment to cause such demented behavior. There's nowhere to go but forward, so roll post. I attempted avoiding combat for a bit just so the players could get the new dynamic figured out. They found a trapped cloud giant that was tricked by the same witch that's been messing with them, and he agreed to help them find their hideout if they get him out of the magical trap. They just needed to get a crystal that was positioned in the middle of a small lake and guarded by two trolls. Easy enough. During that RP time, more strange behavior started emerging from Damien. He was extremely competitive when it came to simple die rolls and general checks, to the point that I asked them all to make a general perception check and he rolled the highest, he would be ecstatic, declaring himself the greatest player that ever lived. If he rolled the lowest, he would immediately become morose and sulk that this always happens to him, and he'd rather kill his character than continue playing this unfair game. But the strangest moments were when he rolled in the middle. He rolls and gets a 14, elated, then Jimmy rolls a 19, and immediately Damien becomes sunken and bleak, talking about killing his character. Then Alex rolls a 10 and Damien instantly becomes exuberant and filled with malicious joy, calling Alex a loser and gloating that at least he wasn't as terrible a player as the poor wizard. The messed up thing was that he went through that kind of emotional swing in the matter of seconds and multiple times per session. Now I've been doing this for over a decade and have become a pretty good judge of kids' behavior. I can usually tell when they're faking having a sad or putting on a brave face. All of the extreme emotions that Damien displayed seemed real. Either that or he's going to be one hell of an actor or politician when he grows up. Well, the dreaded moment came and combat was approaching. The players snuck onto the side of the lake and spotted the guarding trolls before they were spotted themselves. 
I ask them if they want to roll perception, nature, history, anything that might help them prepare. The other kids say yes. Damien shuts them down and says that he's just going to swim for the crystal alone. I urge him to reconsider as I know that the water is full of alligators. He's already in. As the first alligator snaps at him, he screams that he's being targeted and then demands that the other players get in the water with him. Not really an issue as he did need saving, but his reasoning was messed up. Get in the water! If I die, we all die! Again, it's not the first time that he demanded such a thing, but it shocked me nonetheless. Both players get in to help him. He makes his strength check to get away from the alligators, casts healing word on himself, and ditched both of them in the water while mocking them, telling them that they are dead. Now, I as a DM would never target a player, not even someone like Damien, but he was the only one on shore when the trolls were alerted by the commotion. They tore him to shreds as he was continuously casting cure wounds on himself, using up all of his spell slots. The other kids made quick work of the alligators, seeing that they are far less tough than the trolls. They made it to the crystal and got away as the trolls were busy with their lunch. Damien was shrieking so loud his banshee wail peaked his mic. I couldn't make out half of what he was saying. The half that I could make out was him demanding the other two go and let themselves be killed by the trolls as well. That they will die if they don't and that he is quitting the game. He then disconnected, and a strange calm washed over me. This group is probably going to be dissolved now that there are only two players, but maybe this is for the best. I start wrapping up the session for the day, telling Jimmy and Alex what they have found, other than the crystal, when Damien reconnects. I want a wild magic sorcerer. Clerics are trash. Oh boy. This reminds me of those funny memes where the mom goes, Hey son, why don't you go outside and play with the neighbor's kid? And then it cuts to the neighbor's kid. I get that at the end of the day this is a kid, but this is just laughably stupid. That said, this is a serious problem. Normies like you and I may think that this kid is a rare case, but there is, in fact, a bloodthirsty pack of criminally insane children, 220 million in number. I am, of course, talking about the entire player base of Roblox. To end this tale, this isn't normal kid behavior, and I seriously hope that there isn't any really bad underlying cause. But we'll never know. I have more horror stories right here in these funny boxes. And with that, till next time.